Hey Tubers, it's Pop Boys Live from the Internets. Today's conspiracy, we're going over SpaceX, which put 10 next generation satellites into orbit to cover the Earth's entire surface yesterday. California based private space flight company SpaceX successfully delivered the 10 satellites to low Earth orbit on Monday from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California and landed its Falcon 9 on a drone ship in the Pacific Ocean. The SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket blasted off from the Space Launch Complex 4E, uh, SLC-4E, at Vandenberg Air Force Base at 5.37 a.m., carrying 10 satellites for Iridium Communications as part of the company's Iridium Next constellation. So they're calling it a constellation, uh, these new next-gen satellites, which will create a blanketed mesh across the Earth and will rotate uh, around the Earth every 90 minutes, uh, you know, as the supposed space station does. About seven and a half minutes later, the company successfully landed the rocket's first stage on Just Read the Instructions drone ship in the Pacific Ocean. So the drone ship, they call it Just Read the Instructions, or JRI. So cheers and applause broke out in the SpaceX control room as the launch was uh, streamed live online. The mission also marked SpaceX's 14th launch this year and the 17th successful landing of a Falcon 9 first stage. SpaceX has been reusing Falcon 9 first stages and is pursuing fully reusable rockets in an effort to lower the cost of spaceflight. The Iridium Next satellites were deployed about 57 minutes after liftoff, with the entire process taking about 15 minutes. We're 10 for 10, John Innsbrucker, Falcon 9's principal integration engineer, said in a webcast, a clean sweep of Iridium Next satellite deployment in the desired final orbit. Uh, Iridium has acquired healthy signals from all 10 satellites, SpaceX then tweeted. Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, then posted a photo on Instagram showing a satellite was deploying. The last 10 Iridium global communication satellites delivered to orbit several hundred miles above the Earth, traveling at over 17,000 miles per hour. They will circle the planet every 90 minutes. This is the third of eight scheduled SpaceX launches for Iridium's next generation global satellite constellation, Iridium Next, which brings the total number of satellites now in orbit up to 30. The first launch occurred in January, followed by the second on June 25th. The company announced early this month that it has begun live testing of the Iridium Certus service on operational Iridium Next satellites. Beginning on September 25th, the testing and validation process involved uploading and activating software to the Iridium Next satellites already in orbit to enable Iridium Certus. As of October 4th, several Iridium Next satellites in operation were already undergoing live on-orbit Iridium Certus testing. Iridium is the only mobile voice and data satellite communications network that spans the entire globe. According to the company, it is on track to fully replace the world's largest commercial satellite network of low-Earth orbit satellites and what will be one of the largest tech upgrades in history although they will not specify exactly what the tech upgrades are. They're just basically replacing satellites, okay? And uh, it's implied that, you know, they're... It almost implies that they're, like, in a higher orbit, but they're, they're actually in the exact same uh, spot. The satellite communications company has partnered with Thales Alenia Space for their manufacturing, assembly, and testing of 81 Iridium Next satellites, 75 of which will be launched by SpaceX. These 75 Iridium Next satellites are scheduled to be deployed by mid-2018. The process of replacing the satellites one by one in a constellation of this size and scale has never been completed before. The next generation global satellite constellation will deploy a cross-linked low-Earth orbit architecture, providing coverage over 100% of the Earth's surface, including uh, across oceans, airways, and polar regions, so they claim. So... 
again, were basically, they're replacing satellites, calling this a new, you know, constellation, and it's going to blanket the Earth, and they're, you know, they're not going to miss any spots. The whole surface is going to be covered. But the one thing that doesn't really make sense is that the satellites they're replacing, it's exactly the same. So there should have been no missing data, no missing spots. It should have been, you know, global-wide. So, and again, these uh, are circling, or said to be circling the Earth uh, once every 90 minutes, just as the supposed International Space Station uh circles the earth every 90 minutes. Now let's visit the conspiracy portion of this, the story on these next generation satellites, which they're calling, uh, they're calling them Iridium Next. So it's the next generation, Iridium Next constellation, right? So when you look at NASA, when you look at SpaceX, they often name things, you know, they'll name satellites, they'll name ships, they'll name missions, certain names, because again, this is part of the illusion. You need to look into these names, these numbers, you know, there's a lot of different things that are hidden in there. So Iridium, most high school students would know, is a chemical element with symbol LR and atomic number 77, a very hard, brittle, silvery, white transition metal of the platinum group. Iridium is generally credited with being the second densest element after osmium. It's also the most corrosion resistant metal, even at temperatures as high as 2000 degrees Celsius. Although only certain molten salts and halogens are corrosive to solid iridium, finely divided iridium dust is much more reactive and can be flammable. Iridium was discovered in 1803 among insoluble impurities in natural platinum. So Smithson Tennant, the primary discoverer, uh, named Iridium for the Greek goddess Iris, personification of the rainbow, because of the striking and diverse colors of its salts. So Iridium is one of the rarest elements in Earth's crust, with annual production and consumption of only three tons. Okay, so this stuff is really rare. Uh, LR191 and LR193 are the only two naturally occurring isotopes of iridium, as well as the only stable isotopes. The latter is more abundant of the two. So the most important uh, iridium compounds in use are the salts and the acids it forms with chlorine, though iridium also forms a number of organometallic compounds used in industrial catalysts and in research. So iridium metal is employed when high corrosion resistance at high temperatures is needed, as in high performance spark plugs, uh, crucibles for recrystallization of semiconductors at high temperatures, and electrodes for the production of chlorine in the chloralkali process. Iridium radioisotopes are used in some radioisotope uh, thermoelectric generators. So iridium, most people don't know, is found in meteorites in much higher abundance then you would find it in the Earth's crust. For this reason, the unusual high abundance of iridium in the clay layer at the Cretaceous paleogene boundary gave rise to the Alvarez hypothesis that the impact of a massive extraterrestrial object caused the extinction of dinosaurs and many other species 66 million years ago. Similarly, a iridium anomaly in core samples from the Pacific Ocean suggested the Eltonin impact of about 2.5 million years ago. So it is thought that the total amount of iridium in the planet Earth is much higher than that observed in crustal rocks. But as with other platinum group metals, the high density uh, and tendency of iridium to bond with iron caused most iridium to descend below the crust when the planet was young and still molten. So again, why would SpaceX name their next generation satellites Iridium Next when they literally uh, discovered Iridium when they were looking at what happened to the dinosaurs and realized that, uh, you know, the Iridium is probably what, <laughs> what, what caused the extinction of the dinosaurs and many other species 66 million years ago. So, like I said, people, it's time to kind of start to wake up and, and look at what they're hiding 
in the information that they're giving you? Um, are they trying to give us a hint as to something's coming? I don't know. Why don't you guys uh, give me a comment in the comment section? Please subscribe to the channel, throw us a like, and uh, hit the bell so you actually receive notifications about my newest uploads. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll talk to you next time. Maybe tomorrow I want to settle down Until tomorrow I'll just keep moving on Until tomorrow the whole world is my home